Hey, I'm Oliver Heckman. I am the head of engineering at Coda, and I want to show you how we use Coda to manage our interviews and to achieve fair load distribution across the pool of interviewers that we have. So this is the Coda document that we use for interviewing. And this, you can see on the left, it has multiple pages and those pages, uh, certain information needed. And all engineering interview related information is in this document. For example, we have the different technical interviews that we are doing and that candidates are going through managed in this table on this page. It's the interview. Each of the interviews has one or two people assigned to who can train new people to give an interview with this question. And we have the, the details of the interview and the rubric on how to score here. We have also assigned shepherds, what we call shepherds, and these are hiring committee members who look at how the interviewer pool for each question is providing feedback and they basically monitor the quality of how the quality of the interview feedback that we're giving. Then every quarter, I'm basically using this tool and this is a simple calculation, a simple simulation scenario. Let's say if you're planning in the coming quarter to hiring, hire 24 new engineers, I'd look at what the realistic pool of trained interviewers is that I can tap into. Let's assume we want to hire 24 and I could do this with 46 engineers, 46 out of my engineers, I think would be good use to interview. I have pipeline statistics here. So we know from historic information, how many interviews we need to do for one successful hire. That's just simply this data here. From that, it computes how many hours we have to spend to hit that number. And it does a, it gives me information. Okay. If we want every interviewer to invest the same amount of time into interviewing, that would be fair. And then how many interviewers would I have to assign to the different questions, which is simply this column. As you can see, it's not necessarily practical because I will not have 11.87 people on the DB question. So by this column rolls it up to meaningful numbers. So this would be how I would at the higher level assign interviewers to the different questions. And there's one principle that we use at Coda and that is every interviewer is assigned a single question. That means they can specialize on that question, be really, really well calibrated on that question and only need to be trained in a single one. And of course, if after like a year or so, they get tired of asking that question so many times. They can switch to a different question, but in every single quarter, they'll be assigned to a single question. So this is on how I would distribute my pool of interviewers, the 46 across those questions. And if we were to distribute them exactly like the table predicts, then this is the amount of time interviewers would spend per week interviewing. Yeah. And it's decently fair as you can see. So best case 2.5 hours, worst case three hours per week. It also gives me a warning here that currently the way my current interviewers are trained up and assigned, I have too few tech screen interviewers and too few JSON interviewers. So that currently, if I don't interfere by training, by changing this allocation, yeah, some people would have to spend five hours a week and others only 1.7 hours. So, which leads me then to the next page and look at the current pool of interviewers, which is in this table. And here is what they've been trained in, in the past. As I said, historically, we didn't do the single question model. So many people have been trained in many or all questions. We no longer need to do that. So New York people are only really trained in a single question and only doing that until they grow tired of it. So what I can do here now is multiple things. So I can also add some more realistic complexity. In reality, not everybody I might be fine with doing them the same work. Some people here, we currently have a code yellow. So I might say, Hey, let's take engineers in the code yellow, maybe completely out of interviewing at all. Let's remove that to zero. We also have a hiring committee that helps with hiring decisions could go in and say, Hey, if someone joins the hiring committee, we'll just have them do fewer interviews, so few fewer ones. So I meet them. I move them down to 75%, the load of others. So I could do these adjustments if whatever, someone is out for a longer time and can quickly model this here by just moving them to, to zero.
And then I see new hires that have started that have not been trained in interviews yet. And I can go through that list and say, oh, this person has been longer, around long enough. Talk to them. And then I click the button and add them as interviews here. And I can go back to the previous table. I'm lacking a tech screen massively. So I now go in and think through, okay, who is a good tech screen interviewers? And then I would basically assign them those questions. Let's say I'm doing that for all of them. The next step then would typically be, or what would be necessarily be to train them. The person running tr interview training just simply needs to look at this table, which shows, hey, there's a number of people who haven't been trained, who've been assigned to an interview they've not been trained in. They would just train them and then move the slider to 100. So now that achieves theoretical load balance. Now this next problem that is, well, theoretical load balance is great, but like in reality, when you have a candidate coming in and you need to sign an interview, how do you pick the interview? You should pick from the ones that are trained for that interview time. And that is basically this. So this is a page for our recruiters when they're scheduling meetings. They see the same information we just saw on the previous page, but it's A, grouped by interview type. So a recruiter comes in and needs to schedule a text screen interview, go to this page, and they simply pick from the top from the top here. This is sorted by basically the interview load from the expected number of interviews they're expected to do compared to how many they have done. And we chose internally that we want to have this be balanced over 90 days, over a quarter. That's quite a long time frame, but that makes it easy to balance interview load over that longer time because if someone is out for two or three weeks of vacation, it doesn't interfere too much. They can still catch up on that volume of interviews and it reduces that. So what we'll also see is that we had a whole number of people that are just getting uh, trained up for the interview when they are ready, they will join the pool. And because they haven't done interviews yet, they'll jump to the top. Yeah. So a recruiter would go in and say, oh, they haven't done their interviews yet. Uh, and they would go through that. Now. What's nice about this table is the simplicity of how we actually make this work, because this table, the information about the interviews they've done in the last three months and upcoming interviews is simply pulled out of calendar using the Coda GCal Google Calendar Pack. So given that every interview gets scheduled in calendar, that pack is just downloading all the, all the interviews and counting them up by interview. And it's counting for the last three months. But it's also taking into account of an interview schedule at the upcoming interviews. Yeah, it was actually quite a simple solution to an otherwise complex problem. That's the essence of it. As I said, we use a single document to basically manage all our interviews. So there's more information that we need to, for interviewing in reality. There's a number of tools that we've evaluated, the notes and instructions about it how we deal with interview leaks and investigations we've done on that and the notes for that as well as deeper insight into actual interviews that were scheduled. Yeah, that is how we do interviewing and interviewing.